A very good afternoon and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the MWET CEFR Aligned Webinar Part 1, organized by the Johor English Digital Learning Resources, JEDLR, from the Johor State Education Department. I am Navinda Kaur from SMK Datuk Jafar, Johor Bahru. We are pleased to have with us today two very outstanding and experienced Muet teachers. The first is Ponsadia Sulaiman, the senior assistant for Form 6 from Maktab Sultan Abu Bakar, Johor Bahru, who will share her views on the speaking skills. Hi. The second is Puan Isli Nurakma Binti Abdul Rahman from SMK Tasik Utara, Johor Bahru who will speak 
on the writing skill. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Good to see you. Before we begin the webinar, I would like to inform everyone that certificates of attendance will be awarded through a Google Form link at the end of the session. Also, please state your comments or questions in the chat column and the panel members will address them. So ladies and gentlemen, let us begin the MUET CEFR Aligned Webinar Part 1 by inviting our very own special Juan Saadia Sulaiman to share her experience on the speaking skills. Go ahead, Juan Saadia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. I'm uh, Puan Saadia from Maktab Sultan Abu Bakar, Johor Bahru. Thank you, uh, Dr. Navinda, um, our moderator today. First of all, I would like to uh, express my uh, deepest gratitude and special thanks to Johor State uh, Education Department for giving me this opportunity to share some information on what CEFR aligned. And in this webinar, I'll focus on speaking component aligned to CEFR. And my colleague, uh, Madam Islin, will talk about writing component. This is the outline of my slot today. First, uh, I will talk about the CEFR framework and the revised MOET syllabus. Then I'll move on to speaking component 800 slash 2, the revised speaking test, including the aims, the uh, expected areas that candidates should know, such as subject or topic knowledge, background or cultural knowledge, and linguistic knowledge. After that, we will have a look at what is changing in the MUAT speaking test. So, a sample questions of part one and part two, as well as tips on uh, speaking test will be shared. Finally, there will be a question and answer session at the end of this slot. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's look at uh, MUAT in the context of uh, English education reform. In order to produce quality students by 2025, the MUAT exam must be reformed in, uh, in terms of international standards and the results will be reported accurately uh, in terms of the common European framework of reference, that is CEFR. So what is uh, CEFR about? Well, the CEFR describes language ability at six reference levels, A1, 2, C2. The lowest level is beginner or basic user, that is A1 and A2. Then the next level is intermediate or independent user, that is A1 and A2. Last but not least, advanced level, which is proficient user, C1 and C2. For basic user, candidates are able to carry out real life tasks of a touristic uh, nature. Uh, candidates can understand and use familiar everyday expressions and very basic phrases and of a concrete type. For example, uh, they can introduce themselves and can talk uh, and answer questions about personal details. They can also interact in a simple way, provided that the other person talks slowly and clearly. A2 candidates, what about it? They can understand sentences and frequently used expressions related to areas of most immediate relevance. For example, very basic personal and family information, shopping, local geography, and employment. And they can communicate in simple and routine matters. They can describe in simple terms aspect of their background. For independent user, B1 and B2, Candidates are able to express views in social discourse. For B1 candidates, they can understand the main points on familiar matters regularly and counted in work, school, and leisure. They can deal with most situations 
likely to arise while traveling where the language is spoken. And they can describe events, dreams, hopes, and ambitions. And they can brief early, they can briefly give reasons and explanation, explanations. What about B2 candidates? B2 candidates, they can understand the main ideas of complex text on both concrete and uh, abstract. And they can interact in the degree of fluency and spontaneity. They also can interact with native speakers. And uh, they can communicate well with them. They can produce clear detailed text on a wide range of subjects and explain viewpoints on a topical issue. For proficient user, C1 and C2, these candidates are able to participate fully in professional and academic life. C1 candidates, they can understand a wide range of demanding longer text and recognize implicit meaning. They can express themselves fluently and spontaneously. These types of candidates can use language flexibly and effectively for social, academic, and professional purposes. They can produce clear and well-structured detailed text on complex subjects. C2 candidates, they can understand with ease virtually everything heard or read. They can summarize, uh, they can uh, reconstruct arguments, and they can express themselves spontaneously and very fluently and can differentiate finer shades of meaning even in more complex situations. So that's all about the descriptions of uh, each level with regards to CEFR framework. This framework incorporates the four skills that are reading, speaking, uh, listening, and writing. Next. Now, let's move on uh, to the 2008 MUET syllabus versus the revised syllabus, that is year 2020. In 2008, post-secondary test takers took MUET to enter university or higher education. The MUET assesses listening, reading, writing, and speaking skills. And the result was uh, interpreted into a six bands, that is band one, two, three, four, five, and six. And in year 2020, the MUAD syllabus had been revised in which MUAD is a test of English proficiency for admission to higher education, measuring the ability of test takers to listen, speak, read, and write in English in real life situations in specific communicative contexts. Candidates are expected to perform in the university in formal and informal context. And the content is tailored to the requirements of the purpose of the communication. Next, MUAD is a multi-level test, ranging from CEFR levels A2 to C1. The level of difficulty, uh, which uh, means uh, from concrete matters to more abstract. Uh, in white, there are four components, namely listening, speaking, reading, and writing. For all the components, they have the same weighting, that is 25%. Since our focus today is on speaking and writing, I would like to highlight the duration for speaking, that is 30 minutes, still the same as in the previous format, and the duration for writing, that is 75 minutes, which is shorter than uh, the 2008 syllabus. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on uh, to the revised speaking components, uh, 800-2. Next slide, please. The aims of the speaking test are that first, to assess the ability of test takers to give an oral presentation of ideas individually, and second, to interact in small groups in both formal and less formal academic contexts. 
And the speaking test expects the candidate to have three areas. Yeah, first, subject knowledge or topic knowledge. Then second, uh, background or cultural knowledge. Third, linguistic knowledge. And we will look at these three areas in detail. First of all, subject or topic knowledge. Well, basically, it ranges from familiar to the more abstract. And the example is like, what can you do to keep fit? This is a familiar question. It means candidates are familiar with this. As compared to ways of maintaining health or a healthy lifestyle, this topic is more abstract and more challenging. Another uh, topic knowledge is uh, about fluency. So fluency is also uh, one of uh, one of the aspect that uh, candidates should know and should be able to perform during the test. And in other areas of uh, interest, uh, other than uh, as I mentioned earlier, is like. Uh, uh, education, employment, and so on. Okay, next slide. Second area that is background knowledge or cultural knowledge. With regards to cultural knowledge or background knowledge, based on the task given, candidates can draw on their knowledge or understanding of real world settings. For example, if they talk about health, they already have the knowledge of what it means to be in the context of having to consult a doctor when they are sick or understanding how a hospital is run and how the health system works. Next, the third one that is linguistic knowledge. Candidates will be assessed on this area as well. Linguistic knowledge here refers to the use of language and this will include accuracy, that is use of grammatically correct language, correct pronunciation, stress, and intonation. And the second one is use of varied sentence structure. For example, uh, whether they can use complex and compound sentences or whether they, they just uh, use simple sentences or phrases in the speaking test. And the next linguistic knowledge is uh, fluency. Uh, this includes speaking with confidence without unnecessary hesitation and also the pragmatic use of language and social linguistic aspects of language will be taken into consideration as well. Next, what is changing, ladies and gentlemen? Waiting. Yes, the waiting has been changed. Previously, it was 15%. And now with the new syllabus, it is 25%. Next. Now, what does the speaking uh, test involve? Well, basically, uh, candidates are assessed on their ability to give an oral presentation individually. And secondly, uh, group discussion. Okay. Uh, they should be able to interact in small groups in more formal and less formal academic context. The speaking task should elicit some of the uh, language functions such as negotiating, um, interrupting, summarizing, evaluating, prompting, and so on. Next. Now, let's move on to the next one, that is test overview. New format of um, web speaking. Uh, there will be two parts, part one and part two. Part one is individual presentation, whereby candidates will be given two minutes to prepare and two minutes to uh, present their views. And uh, the second one is group discussion, that is part two. and. Uh, Candidates will be given five prompts in the form of a mind map. In part one, candidates are not allowed to ask uh, questions 
because the word choice for the task is very common and easy to understand. And uh, the question is pitched at A2 level. So by right, candidates should have no problem to comprehend what is the question about. So I would suggest to teachers out there, when choosing the question for part one, be careful with choice of word. If you are not sure what level of word is, you can check it in the vocabulary profile. Now, the response attributes for part one, the register expected to somewhat from more, and the production relates mostly to concrete matters. The task given uh, in part one results in speech ranging from A2 to B2. Now let's uh, look at uh, part two, group discussion. Group size, part of uh, part two of the test involves a group discussion with a maximum of four members. And the time given to prepare is three minutes. Then uh, they will be given eight to 12 minutes to discuss depending on the size of the group. If there are two candidates, so four to uh, eight minutes will be given to them. And if three candidates says to 10 minutes. So the topic for part one and part two are related. Part one and part two are thematically linked. However, part two, uh, part two is written so that the test takers have to address uh, the topic in a more abstract and conceptual level, negotiating their way to answer the question. And uh, two examiners are present during the test and one examiner will give the instruction to the, uh, to the candidates. And register, the expected register is general academic, uh, but can uh, vary in forms of uh, formality. The production should uh, cover more abstract and conceptual matters. And level of response, the results uh, uh, will be ranging from B1 to C1. Next. Now, I'm going to share with you a sample of Muet Speaking Part 1, that is individual presentation. So, a candidate will be given a different task, but uh, it will be on the same situation. In Part 1, uh, individual presentation, you will be given a question on concrete matters. For example, uh, as you can see in the slide, candidate A, you have to give a presentation to your class. Talk about the importance of what and when people eat. As you can see, the question is concrete and straightforward. The topic given is familiar and they should be able to respond to it. And each candidate, candidate A, B, C, and D, will have a different task. So they have uh, different uh, tasks, yeah? A, B, C, D, as you can see from the slide. Once they have finished part one, they will move on to part two, group discussion. This question will be more abstract and more conceptual and complex, but it's still on the same thing. In part two, candidates uh, look at the health in a bigger picture. They can use information in the mind map. Next, please. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, they will decide which is the best suggestion. So let's look at the mind maps. We have uh, five uh, points given there. Uh, it's about healthcare. How can healthcare best be improved? So uh, the points are more doctors, uh, hospital buildings, train nurses better, cost of medicine and education. Let's say candidates do not want to use the points given. Well, that's fine. They can use their own points as long as it is relatable to the task. For example, maybe candidates wish to talk about providing modern equipment or training more specialists. Those are just examples. So they can talk about it and uh, they won't be penalized by uh, talking about other than uh, points given in the mind map. Next slide, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we have looked at the sample questions for part one and part two. Now let's uh, look at the next one. These are some tips for white speaking. 
expressed. These are only suggestions, yeah? Read the situation given carefully and make sure do not run out of topic. So I would suggest that candidates can write down the keywords pertaining to the topic and to, to make sure that they are on the right track. Second, keep uh, the conversation going. Listen actively. When responding, please elaborate your points. Do not say yes or no without justifying your answer. And talk in a moderate, moderate manner. Next, use uh, low frequency words or good vocabulary. This uh, shows uh, your wide range of vocabulary. And next one would be active participation. Make sure you participate actively. But do not uh, monopolize the discussion because if you do so, you are depriving others' uh, uh, right to speak. Yeah. And next one. Respond uh, to uh, uh, respond uh, to the task by make use of uh, two minutes. Yeah. Uh, make use of two minutes. Make sure you elaborate well and give examples. So I, I advise the candidates, uh, the next one is I advise the candidates to have, uh, sorry, I advise candidates to be polite in the discussion. And the next one would be eye contact. Make sure you have an eye contact with your uh, speakers, I mean, with your uh, members and also your examiners. And one more is use discourse markers. Uh, to show your fluence, uh, to so to show your uh, flow of ideas when uh, you respond to the task. And last but not least, uh, speak uh, fluently and clearly. All right. Those are only suggestions from me. The tips from web speaking test. Okay. And uh, I think uh, that's all from me. So uh, I would pass this to our moderator. Uh, Dr. Navinder, but please stay tuned. There will be uh, our next session on writing. Uh, over to you, Dr. Navinder. All right. Thank you very much, Pon Savia. That was indeed uh, very informative. All right. Uh, let's look at the comments from the audience. Uh, I would like to welcome teachers uh, from uh, Johor. Many teachers are from Johor. We also have an audience from uh, Sarawak and from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. All right, uh, there is a particular question, Puan Sadia, that I would like to draw your attention to. It is a question from uh, Madam Suziana Mohammad, And her question is, is there any specific structure to follow in the speaking test in order to get a higher band? All right, well, Basically, in uh, speaking test, uh, well, uh, candidates should be able to introduce uh, uh, introduce the uh, task, okay, uh, and uh, uh, after that introduction, just a brief uh, introduction of the task, then they can move on to their points because it's only two minutes, so they uh, can talk about the first point and then second points and so on, right? And they can use linkers as well to show the flow of your ideas, yeah? And don't forget to conclude, yeah? So a good, uh, a good uh, presentation should have introduction and then uh, body whereby you have uh, to uh, tell us what your points are and to conclude, yeah? So I think that's basically uh, more or less the format. Is that uh, answering your question? Yes. Thank you very much, Pon Sadia. That was indeed uh, very informative. All right. So uh, please stay on. We will move on to the next session, but we hope that you'll join us until the end of the webinar. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure all of you are eager to join here and to listen to our second speaker today, Puan Isli Nurakma binti Abdul Rahman from SMK Tase Utara. Okay, and she will be speaking on the writing skills. Over to you, Puan Isli. Okay, thank you, Dr. Navin. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Isli Nurakma binti Abdul Rahman 
and I'm from SMK Tasi Utara, Johor Bahru. Okay, as, uh, as mentioned before, I will be talking on the writing skill from WET, okay? And I have outlined uh, what I want to say today in terms of the differences. The first one is the differences in the 2008 WET uh, syllabus or format versus the 2020 or the revised one, uh, the MWET CFR line. Okay, so I will be uh, looking at the task type, uh, the length of response, uh, the type of stimulus, the duration, the weighting, and also the CFR level. And the second part of my uh, presentation would be the implications for learning and teaching of the MWET 2020 revised syllabus. All right. So let's start with the differences. Okay, uh, the first one is the task type. Okay, so for the 20, uh, two, 2008 um, wet format or syllabus, uh, if you remember the question one, uh, we had to interpret the information on a stimuli, okay? Or actually a few uh, graphs or, or, or tables. And it, it's a, a, a form of a report writing, yeah? And for question two, uh, we have to write an essay based on a given topic, and uh, we also uh, call that as extended writing. Okay, moving on to the, the revised format of the 2020 MWET CFR Aligned, which is uh, task one. So we are using the word task one instead of question one. And it is also uh, in a form of, uh, you know, a particular um, a form of report or email uh, in reply to a prompt compared to the previous one, which is a report. So it's still uh, guided, okay? Uh, and uh, task two, uh, again, you have to write an essay, but this time it could be a discursive essay, argumentative or problem solution kind of essay. Okay, moving on to the length of response, okay? Uh, for the old format, we had question one, and the candidates had to write between 150 to 200 words. And for question two, uh, the, the number of words that the candidates must write is not less than 350 words. Okay, so when we go and look at the new format, uh, task one, uh, they only have to write at least 100 words. And for task two, for at least 250 words. Okay, for both tasks, task one and task two, for the length of response, uh, there will be no penalties associated with writing a shorter or a longer response. So don't worry about, you know, your response being too short or too long, okay? Uh, the responses will still be uh, marked accordingly and it will be read as a whole. Okay, so let's look at the type of stimulus. Okay, the type of stimulus given for the previous format, uh, for question one, uh, there was uh, stimuli given in the graphic form. Uh, if you remember the charts, the graphs or tables, uh, two or three of them are given with uh, rubrics, okay? For question two, it's more textual uh, in a form of a few sentences and statements. However, when you look at the new format, uh, you will see that for task one, Okay, uh, the stimulus is given in a form of a letter or an email. Okay, um, not just that, you are given three to four notes on the email or on the letter with rubrics to respond to. And for task two, it is <clears throat> also textual in a sense that uh, it is uh, put, however, it is put uh, in a context. The task is put in context so that you, the, the candidates can respond to it uh, can respond to the idea and the problem in a formal genre, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, we are going to look at uh, the next one is the duration, the weighting, and also the CEFR level. Okay, for the first uh, 2008 MWET, uh, duration is 90 minutes or one minute and uh, one hour and 30 minutes. Uh, the weighting was 30%. And the CFR level was not provided. Yeah, remember that? And <clears throat> for the 2020 MWET CFR Align, uh, the duration of the test is 75 minutes only, uh, about one hour and 15 minutes. Uh, the weighting is also less, uh, 25%. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> and the CFR level for task one, uh, the language in the stimulus will not or should not exceed B1, okay? And for the task two, the language in the stimulus uh, should not exceed band two, uh, sorry, B2, okay? For task one, um, the responses may range from A2 to C1, okay? So you can see that for task one, uh, the, 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 the exam or the, the writing uh, will cater to students who are not, um, I mean, not as proficient as they should, I mean, as they could be, okay? So everyone can attempt that task. But for task two, the responses can, uh, can range from B1 to C1, which is near proficient. So um, the candidates who are really good and proficient are given a chance to further uh, show their creativity and, and, and be able to write better, okay? So let's move on to the implications for the learning and the teaching of MWET. I think this is very important in terms of you being a teacher, I mean me as well being a teacher, uh, because we want to know how we can help our students uh, to learn and to prepare for the exams, yeah? Okay, so let's have a look. Um, I'm giving you a sample question for task one. If you have a look at task one, uh, there is a, a format they're given, an email, okay? The stimulus is an email. And if you look at task one, you are advised to spend about 25 minutes on this task. So 25 minutes is not long, okay, ladies and gentlemen. You need to be able to time yourself well so that you, you can write within this space of time so that you don't run, of, uh, run out of time for your second task. Okay. Uh, if you look at the, the email, it is from Armani, okay? Uh, your classmate Armani was absent from school because he was sick. Okay, so um, you are going to respond to Armani and he's your classmate, therefore he's a friend. So uh, I want you to think about how you approach this in terms of language because you need to be able to uh, uh, write, uh, you know, uh, an email, a, uh, a reply to the email uh, in appropriate register. Okay, in terms of you talking to your friend, okay? Uh, so it can be a bit for uh, semi-formal, not too informal, but semi-formal, I would say semi-formal. Okay, your, your classmate Armani was absent from school because he was sick. Read the email from him asking about the school English camp, which he missed. So if you notice the subject is on, oh, I missed the English camp, okay? So that would be the main task that you need to always refer to. So whatever that you're talking about, it is about the school English camp, okay? You need to make that clear in your response when you're writing your uh, email, yeah? Okay, using all the notes given, if you notice that uh, on the far, uh, far right-hand side, you can see that notes given, there are four. You have great, uh, describe, uh, no because, and tell our money. So those are the notes given and you need to respond to the notes. Write a reply of at least 100 words in an appropriate style. Okay, so you need to reply in 100 words, but um, I don't think that you, you know, you should uh, stop yourself from going further. If you can write more, uh, please do so, okay? okay? Because it shows uh, the level of uh, ability of uh, your skills in writing and, and to, to show that you really can respond to this question well, okay? So if you notice that it's 30, 30 means it's 30 marks there, okay, for task one, okay? Let's have a look at task one in detail, okay? So this is the same thing, the sample only, uh, the sample writing task, the stimulus, which is the email. Uh, I just want to highlight, okay, if you look at the first note, okay, um, how was the school English camp? One, okay, I feel very sad that I could not join the camp. That's the second quest, uh, second statement. So the, the word or the note given is great, yeah, you notice that great. So you need to be able to respond using the word great, uh, with the question given, how was the English school camp? Sorry, how was the school English camp, okay? Um, you cannot respond, great, I feel very sad. I mean, that would not be uh, appropriate, would, uh, you know, wouldn't it? 
So you need to say great. The the school English camp was great. Okay, and then further on we have uh, describe. What do you describe? What was your favorite activity during the camp? So you need to be able to talk about a favorite activity during the camp, but you need to describe it, you know, a bit more. Not just say that oh my favorite activity was the fashion show, and that's it. You need to be able to talk about you know more about the fashion show. Why did you like it? Okay, and then we have also. I also heard campus had to share tents. Do did you like it? No, because <clears throat> so in this um, particular note, it's no. You need to say no, and then you need to give a reason. So you cannot say yes because the note says no. So please follow the notes given. And you have to give the reason why you didn't like sharing the tents with other campers. And the last note is tell Armani. So what <clears throat> what do you tell Armani? Okay, <clears throat> Armani would like to know whether uh, you would like to join him in another camp soon. So you need to tell him whether you would like to join, or maybe you can't join him. So you are given a choice to say yes. Or no, but you must also, you know, further elaborate on your uh, choice of answer. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, how to respond to the notes? Uh, this is an example. Okay, I'm I'm taking the first note uh, where it says great. Okay, um, so let's look at the stimulus. How was the English? Uh, how was the school English camp? Okay, so that's uh, the first sample that I gave. If you have a look at the slide. Oh, the school English camp was simply great. So the word great is used in the sample response. And this is a very simple way of saying, um, you know, that you have responded to the stimulus. And that's fine. Okay. But if you have a look at the second response, the school English camp was wonderful. Okay. I had fun. Okay, so there's nowhere the word great is not there anywhere. But if you look at the word wonderful and I had fun, it implies or it shows that it means that it's great. Okay, so you don't actually need to use the word great to uh, respond to the you know stimulus or to the notes. You can use other words or phrases uh, that mean the same thing and and you know uh, show that you have um, other probably better words to use but it means the same yeah great let's have a look at the second uh, statement given in the in the the, the first paragraph yeah okay um, I feel very sad that I could not join the camp okay I underline feel very sad because that's the main thing uh, Armani felt sad okay but the response and you you need to respond to it saying that Oh, it was too bad that you could not join us, probably. So um, you need to respond to, I feel very sad I could not join the camp, okay? You cannot just simply leave it out. You need to be able to uh, respond to everything that has been mentioned in the email so that it follows a certain guideline. You know, you, you, you are very guided in task one, so just follow it in, in responding to the notes. Um, if you notice the second one, yes, it's depressing to Mr. Kemp, right? Okay, I, I made it into a question because if you think that you need to respond uh, in a form of a question, it's fine, okay? So you can respond to the notes in a form of a question and then probably you need to uh, detail, uh, you know, have more information about uh, missing the cam or you know you can you can say further what whatever that is uh, that you need to develop that idea okay so I'm just going to show you that note one and it goes the same for note number two number three and number four okay so um, you look at task one the guided writing uh, this is just uh, what I am suggesting Okay, you might want to, you know, uh, have more of this, what you need to focus on with your students. Okay, number one is fulfill the task. Fulfilling the task means that uh, you have to look at the question, make sure that they, they understand the question. Then this question is about replying to an email. So um, the form of an email must be, uh, you know, clear that it's an email. Okay, so there will be, uh, you know, the subject probably, and there will be um, 
uh, to whom the email is uh, for and who um, uh, who the email is sent from okay uh, is from sorry okay so um, I would like to um, make sure that you remember the subject which is about the school English camp so make sure it's written again so that uh, we we are clear about what we're talking about yeah so refer the second one is to refer to the main purpose of the task so the main purpose of the task is uh, talking about the uh, English uh, the camp yeah the English camp at the school so that should be the main idea or main thing that you are talking about throughout the email okay don't lose track of what you're, you're just responding to great uh, I had fun but where did you have fun so you need to have, say that oh I had fun at the English camp so the main purpose of the task is to highlight about uh, to highlight the uh, you know the the subject of the email okay so the next one is respond okay so respond to the given notes there were four notes given so please respond to all four notes yeah so you don't miss anything out because uh, I mean what is given you have to respond to and you know it will make you a uh, clear and we can follow the the email very easily okay and the next one uh, in in relation to notes as well, you need to add in uh, your extra information for each of the notes. Yeah. So each note probably you want to have like a sentence or two on on you know on, on how you would like to express yourself uh, further for that particular uh, you know a note given. Okay. So add in a bit uh, of development, but not too much. Okay. And then you have to use. <clears throat> use appropriate language okay uh, remember i told you that it's between uh, friends so how would language between friends you know uh, how would you say to your friend you know rather than uh, looking at it in in terms of very formal and the language is uh, academic so that would not be appropriate so please make sure that the language is appropriate if it's between uh, you and a lecturer for example or a teacher then probably you have that you know certain courtesy that you want to extend in your writing okay and the last one would be uh, be mindful of the time okay because as you know there's only 25 minutes and if you write longer uh, you will not have much time for the next task and you know that the next task will be the bulk of uh, the marks given yeah so be careful of the time make sure that you write what you need to write okay so uh, now we move on to task two uh, the sample questions and uh, it is um, for 60 marks yeah uh, okay so you are advised to spend about 50 minutes on this task this is just a suggestion but usually it is what you're supposed to do and it works okay so 50 minutes you can actually write uh, three points actually for 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 uh, the contents for this task okay the next would be okay this is the context that I was talking about the communicative context that uh, this is a bit different from the previous uh, 2008 MUET syllabus okay we didn't have this but here in the new format you have a sort of um, statement saying that this is uh, you know this is the situation you attended a talk by a famous fashion designer which was recently organized during your school's career week so it sets uh, a situation and you have you know you listen to this uh, fashion designer say about uh, what the next one would be uh, the comment given by the guest speaker so you listen to this guest uh, guest speaker talking about fashion defines a person's character so um what i want you to remember okay students and teachers as well that uh, the students need to focus on the topic that the fashion that fashion defines a person's character not about the fashion designer the the career week or you know that is only to set the you know situation so that people are clear from where their standpoint or the viewpoint is they need to focus on the essay writing of fashion defines a person's character Okay, so the you need to write an essay to express your opinion on the statement. 
okay, and write at least 250 words. So fashion defines a person's character. So immediately you would, you know, think to yourself whether you uh, agree with that, even though it doesn't say, do you agree in the question, but you automatically will say, what do I think about this statement? Uh, do I think that it is true whether fashion defines a person's character or no, I don't think it's true. Uh, fashion does not define a person's character. So you need to, you know, have those questions in your mind before you attempt to answer the, uh, the essay question. Okay, so let's have a look um, what to focus on when you're uh, writing or, you know, uh, the essay. Okay, the first one, you need to address the keywords given from the title. So the title, if you remember, uh, fashion defines uh, a person's character. So there are three things there. Fashion, okay, uh, you should be able to understand what fashion is, yeah? Or maybe when you're writing, you give your own definition. Defines, okay, a person's character. So what is a person's character and how do you incorporate or relate fashion and a person's character. So the keywords should be clear and addressed and related to throughout the essay, all right? The second part is uh, none of the keywords can be changed. Okay, what do I mean by this? So if you look at the, the question, it says fashion defines a person's character, right? So if you, you know, disagree, you think that, no, I don't think fashion defines a person's character, but I think mm, family does. So you write, family defines a person's character. So that is not allowed, and that will uh, not go well with the essay that you're going to write, okay? You can have uh, a difference of opinion saying that, no, I disagree that fashion defines a person's character. And then you go on to say, I think that family or other things uh, defines a person's character. You, you can talk about that, but you need to make sure that you go back to the keyword of fashion. So you need to always come back to, you. they call it touch base, yeah? So you need to touch base saying that, no, fashion does not define, that's why I'm saying that fashion does not define a person's character, yeah? So do not change any of the keywords, okay? Um, the next one is, uh, of course, I was talking about a clear stand, whether you agree, uh, you disagree, or you can agree to a certain extent, okay? Um, if you would, you know, like to talk more and give a balanced uh, viewpoint, you probably would say that um, I agree to a certain extent and you give the positive points and also the negative points. But I would not advise that uh, for students who are, you know, trying to get their ideas, trying to uh, put their ideas together and struggling while writing, okay? I would just advise you to just stick to either agree or disagree and i always say to my students that it's easier to agree okay and depending on the um a topic as well you look at what you you have more points on okay and then uh we have also to offer two to three points uh to be discussed in your essay so you can have two points um, you can also have three points. The usual would be the three points where you have a five paragraph essay, uh, the introduction, paragraph one, and then the body or the points. Uh, so paragraph two, three, and four. And the last paragraph, paragraph five, would be the conclusion. However, if you think that you are running out of time and you can only offer two points, that is not a problem um, as well. You can offer two points, but they must be really developed and well explained and elaborated. So this is the challenge for people who uh, are going to write only two points, but they need to be able to explain it well and develop it well, okay? So the next point would be, <clears throat> Okay, showing maturity of thought. Okay, um, because it's, uh, you know, uh, this is the level of uh, post-secondary and uh, pre-U level, okay, uh, then that element of maturity must be included in uh, your essay, okay, uh, whether it's uh, mature in, in terms of the points or the maturity in terms of development of ideas and also the word use or vocabulary. So you need to try and see how you can show that maturity through your essay writing, 
Okay, this is very important. Okay, um, let's look at the next um, slide. Okay, so um, as uh, you know, um, uh, teachers, okay, how how can we encourage our learners? Okay, so what what can we encourage learners to do? Number one, you probably could ask them to to read extensively in terms of uh, not just you know news, uh, not just academic journals, but probably they want to read uh, some things or some materials from the social media. It's fine. Um, so long as the ideas uh, reflect that maturity, okay? Um, I would suggest listening to podcasts as well instead of reading, you know? Podcasts are for listening. So that would be also, um, you know, uh, useful for the, the learners to do, okay? The next one um, would be uh, a person should be up to date or current in their knowledge of what's happening around them. So um, a popular... Uh, issue would be health uh, at the moment. Uh, the face uh, we are facing the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, so that I think would be in everyone's mind. Uh, but uh, even if you have that uh, knowledge, the way that you present it will show whether you are, you know, uh, able to show uh, your maturity through that language. Yeah. So it's not just the knowledge of it, but how you present it as well. So you need to be able to do that properly. Okay. Uh, the next one is, of course, if you're, you know, you're, you're aiming to be good at writing, uh, of course, you need to practice, right? So practice writing. So practice writing doesn't mean that you need to write a whole essay at one, you know, one shot, okay? Uh, teachers, you might want to break up your lessons into, you know, uh, introduction first. So the learners today will write introduction only and looking at the um, topic and then trying to uh, discern uh, what, um, uh, what is uh, the, the the task about and then continue writing uh, just the introduction and then maybe move on to uh, body and conclusion. So practice your writing and I would say within the time limit given. Yeah. Okay. The next would be, uh, okay. Yeah. Mind the time. So I would combine the two when you are practicing writing and if you are given the chance to write the whole essay, um, I would suggest that you set the time so that you know you are you are used to the time frame of fifty minutes or maybe less because you need time to uh, brainstorm and plan your essay before you write. Right? <laughs> okay. So the last one uh, would be to build uh, your vocabulary bank. Okay. So uh, this is important in terms of achieving that maturity in thought that I was mentioning before. So when your vocabulary is good, I mean, you don't have to impress uh, the examiners or the readers, uh, you know, with big words that you use, but the words that, the choice of words that you use is actually um, apt for that particular uh, sentence or that particular point. And that would be uh, what we are looking for rather than, you know, just impressing people with big words and actually not meaning anything. So try to avoid uh, overusing these uh, bombastic words. You know, my, my students like to use bombastic words. So try not to Im impress people that way, but, uh, you know, build your vocabulary and try to see how that vocabulary is used in the correct context. Okay, so... Um, I think that's um, all that I, I, I'd like to share. Uh, if uh, you think that this is useful, please do share with other people and, and uh, you know, tell them about how uh, the writing should be approached, okay? So um, that's all from me. Um, I would uh, give this back to uh, Dr. Navin um, to further our, you know, uh, webinar. All right. Thank you very much, Bonnie Slim. That was indeed uh, very important details for the writing paper, right? And I'm also very grateful that we have a few people from all the way from Sarawak. So thank you, uh, teachers and students from Miri Sarawak for joining us today. All right, uh, Pondis Lin, we have a few questions from the audience and they're excited to get more information. All right, so uh, we have uh, the first question is yeah. from um madam uh just a minute uh. okay the first question is from 
uh, Madam Norliza Yahya, okay. right? And she wants to know for task one, okay. will we be tested on email only? Are there any other types of questions that can be asked? Okay. Um, okay, Puan Oliza, thank you for your question. Um, basically, for task one, uh, you know, for this first session, it was given an email, yeah? And the, the sample that I gave just now was taken from the MPM uh, regulation booklet, the sample questions from MPM. So it is also an email. But as I mentioned earlier, it could be also in a form of a letter. And I would think that the letter would probably be uh, an informal letter compared to a formal letter. Yeah. So um, not only email, it could be a letter. So you could, you know, try and uh, uh, ask your students to get used to that kind of format of letter writing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Puan Nislin. Uh, we have another question from Madam Suziana Muhammad. She asked us earlier. Thank you, Puan, Madam Suziana, for being very attentive this afternoon. Yeah. All right. Uh, and she's a very experienced teacher, I would say. Her question is, Puan Nislin, uh, yeah. email writing is also tested in SPM Writing Task 1. Yeah. What are what candidates uh, expected to do more in order to get a higher band than SPM candidates. So she's comparing SPM with MUET. Can you yeah. share your thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, thank you, uh, Pon Suziana. Um, yes, uh, this is a very good question, actually. And people are asking what the difference is between the SPM. And uh, some of them are also talking about the PT3 format of email and compared to MUET. Okay, if uh, you you remember what I mentioned uh, earlier, when 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 I'm going through, when I went through the email, um, the responses that you need to uh, write for task one, you should uh, make sure that all the notes are responded to accordingly, and whatever is written uh, for the email, for example, the you remember the paragraph one, there were two sentences, so each sentence must be responded, must be put in context when you reply to that email, and also you need to have uh, further notes or further information based on what you have mentioned responding to the notes given. So in that sense, it is... Um, in terms of, um, you know, the level of um, difficulty, if you can say that, for MUET would be more, you know, we are looking for that maturity in answering, not just simply describing any activity. Probably we want to have activities that relate to, uh, you know, that level of um, MUET uh, level you know, a Form 6 level rather than just simply saying, oh, we had a treasure hunt, that's it. You know, what, what do you mean by having a treasure hunt? Yeah, you know, the treasure hunt must be related to English and how would that be related? So a, a, a kind of explanation would be needed in order for the, the readers or the uh, examiners to look at the uh, email response from the candidate. So they need to be able to write a bit more and with a higher level of complexity. I would say, rather than just simply throwing in what they think the email wants. Yeah? Okay. I hope that answers your question, Puan Suzy. Okay. Okay. Thumbs up, Puan Islin. That was indeed a very clear response. Okay. Uh, Madam Suziana has another question, Puan Islin. Right. She's really okay. very uh, interested. Okay. <laughs> and her question is, is marking okay. the CEFR aligned wet easier compared to the old days? Oh, okay. Right. So that means uh, the old system, the, the 2008 and the present uh, 2020 uh, format. Okay. Okay, uh, Puan Suziana, um, uh, maybe you are, you are considering, uh, you know, to mark <laughs> the wet. Okay, it's like this. Um, if I say yes, uh, because of several reasons and maybe no for several reasons as well. So it's not as simple yes or no, but uh, you have to look at it in a way that... Um, when you're marking, for example, task one, you need to be able to look for, you know, what uh, what responses uh, the candidate has written in order to respond to the notes. So it's not simply, you know, looking, reading once and, you know, they, they, have, they must be in context. So in that sense, it's a bit tedious as well. But if you compare that to writing a report, remember, uh, the old format, 
that was even more tedious and you had to count the number of words but for the this particular email um this particular task one the writing for task one you, remember i mentioned that you do not uh, need to you know count the number of words because uh, it doesn't matter whether they reach that 100 words or they you know um go over the the 100 words so in that sense it's yeah it's straightforward and easier and for the um for the Task two, the, the, the essay writing, uh, it is very similar. However, because we have a time constraint, so the, the students will try to cram everything in and we need to sort out or sift through the points. Yeah, if you look at your, you know, your students' responses, they will probably just, you know, simply put things together and it will not be easy in terms of looking at it properly because they need to relate to the um, keywords, as I mentioned before. And I would think that task two would be a bit more challenging in terms of the question and it's not straightforward. Yeah, the, the, the relationship between the keywords are very important and they need to relate to each other and connect. Yeah. So yes and no. Uh, more yes, I think. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Isleen. That was really, really uh, very informative. Right. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have any more time, but I would like to remind uh, everyone here that you can watch this video again and look through the slides, all right, from the JEDLR uh, YouTube channel. All right. So do visit the JEDLR website for more MOET worksheets. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have come to the end of our webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today. Our heartfelt appreciation to Puan Saadia, all right, and Puan Islin too, for joining us for this MOET CFR Aligned Webinar Part 1. By the way, Happy Mother's Day, ladies. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Right. Okay. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Pengara Jabatan Pendidikan Negeri Johor and also Sektor Pembelajaran Jabatan Pembri, uh, Pembelajaran Negeri Johor for their support. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to click on the Google link to get your certificates of attendance. All right, for our Muslim audience, we wish you a blessed Ramadan and a joyful shawal. Please remember to stay safe, everyone. Take care. Thank you. And goodbye. Bye.